Hello everyone. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to show you how can you play a blindfold chess game. I'm gonna play the blindfold chess on my own. Later, of course, I will analyze it with pieces uh, on the board so you can check how long can you follow me and my process of thinking without seeing pieces on the board. And you need to know that this is a very good exercise that helps you with the visualization, with the calculation, you can just see more on the board if you can play the blindfold game. And you also need to know that uh, I created a workbook called Stop Making Blunders. You can uh, get it completely for free on stopmakingblunders.matbobula.com. And uh, one of the exercises, I, I recommend that there are seven exercises, what you can do to blunder less. One of those exercises is, of course, the blindfold chess. So uh, yeah, get, get, get it completely. You can get it there completely for free. And one quick word before I start the game. How do you change your settings into the blindfold chess? You need to go to play later to settings. And now you can see pieces. I have got Neo. Maybe you are using a different, different pieces. But here you need to find a blindfold. You click it and you, cl you press save and you can see that this is a blindfold position. Of course, uh, you, can, you can watch on the board. Uh, and very important thing, on the right side, you can see also notation. If you're not sure what happened into the board, take a look into the notation and try to uh, realize what is going on on the board, also based on that. Okay, so I got 20 to 8,500 opponent for the blindfold chess. Let's see how it will go. Probably it's gonna be hard, but let's 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 have a try. Okay, so we can see d4 knight goes to f6. I play c4, e6. So most likely I will play something that I know pretty well. So I will play knight f3, b6. So this is as you can see, queen's Indian. I answer with the g3, bishop b4. Okay, I play bishop d2. So this is kind of like a queen's Indian or bogo Indian. Not sure what is that gonna be. Usually black plays bishop b7 or bishop a6 before. Bishop takes d2. I think I will take it with the knight. It's safer. Now I just want to play bishop g2. I want a castle to secure my king. Okay, I castle. And later probably my idea is going to be to play queen to c2, e4. This is a very common idea. Opponent goes c5. Uh, okay, opponent can play c5. Opponent's idea is to capture that pawn. Opponent maybe wants to exchange bishops. Uh, should I be afraid of this? Don't think so. I, if I play queen to c2, then opponent probably will what? Take it or not? Will opponent capture that? If takes, knight takes, we exchange bishops. Okay. Another option for me is to go uh, d5. Pawn takes d5. No knight to h4, but I don't think that it works in this specific position uh, because opponent has got, I think, queen to c7 or something like this protecting that bishop. So probably I will just play queen to c2. I also want to bring my rooks into the game. In the blindfold chess, it's pretty important to... Uh, I will exchange everything to play something that you feel comfortable at. Okay, opponent develops knight to c6. And now there is a threat that opponent will capture my knight at the d4. So what are my options? I can take it, of course. It will lead into a very symmetrical pawn structure with the open d file. Okay, this is one option. I can also play knight d to f3. In case opponent takes, I take opponent plays d5. But to be honest, I think I like knight takes c6 more. And I will play... Now I have to move my knight because I want to place my my rooks on the d-file. If in the position there is one open file, this is the most important thing. So I'm going to play knight f3, either knight e4, exchanging knights. Or you know what, I have got better idea. Before I decide, I will maybe bring rook into the d-file. I want to play this move anyway, so let's even start with this move. Okay, opponent moves the queen, and now, should I exchange knights or should I keep them? 
Okay, let's play knight e4. Let's offer an exchange. Opponent captures. I capture with a queen. And we have got position only with, uh, only with major pieces left on the board. Uh, because opponent has got two rooks and a queen, I have got queen and two rooks. And we have got three pawns. I have got three pawns on the queen side, so my opponent, and four pawns on the other side. And now if I play something like rook d3, opponent will take it. I capture back with a queen and opponent goes rook d8, opponent will win the battle on the open file. I cannot let it happen. So what else can I do? Of course, I don't want to capture at the d8 first. Mm, I can play b3, move that improves the position. I can go back with my queen to this place, but then and then with the idea to what? To exchange pieces or what? I like my queen because it's in the central square. Does it make sense to play something like c5? I don't think so. Also, I do, don't want to make that position too complicated. Um, let's play b3. b3 is the move that makes my position slightly stronger. So let's just play this move and see what opponent will do. Not sure what to do, try to focus on improving your position. In case opponent goes c5, okay, opponent plays g6. So the idea of playing g6 is probably to create a safe spot for the king so king can escape, there is no back rank. Let's play h4. In some variations I can go h5, but of course opponent answers with the h5, trying to block it. Uh, okay, so what can I do? Maybe king to g1. Moving king out of any checks. Does it make sense? It has got some sense, but if I go back with a queen, opponent plays c5 most likely. I will exchange everything. Yeah, this is going to be equal position. But I really don't want to move my queen back from a very good central square. Let's play king to g1. I'm moving my king back in case there are some checks on the diagonal. Ah, okay, opponent plays rook to d7. Ah, okay, I should I should have probably realized... Uh, <laughs> I should have probably realized that my I couldn't do that, but my opponent can actually do something like this. And now in case I capture, queen captures, and opponent controls the open file. In case I move my queen back, opponent will double the rooks. Maybe this is not a disaster. Okay, but now it's a problem. I missed that opportunity. I should have bring my queen back. So what are my options right now? I can move my king to f1, to e1. Yeah, maybe this is the choice. I'll move my king here. Opponent will play here. I'll move my king to e1. Yeah, I think this is something I'm going to do. My king is protecting rook at the d1. So does my rook. And now I can exchange. I cannot exchange, that's true. But I can go back my queen, exchange and play rook d1 and we will get into the end game. Opponent plays c5. If I capture, queen captures. If I take, queen takes, queen goes to c2, queen to c6, trying to, with the attempt to move to the h1. I mean, a good thing is that probably my opponent doesn't know that I played blindfold. So it's not expecting that I will miss such a simple trick. But what are my other options? Rook d3 doesn't make that much sense. How can I wait? If I go there, opponent directly will play queen to c6. Should I play e3? Okay, let's play e3. e3 is a waiting move because later I can move my king to e2. So king has got more space. And also I have to pay attention to the time. 
because um, I have got only 350. Rook d6. So obviously my opponent is trying to triple pieces. Okay, I think I will go here. After queen to d7, I will take it. Queen takes and I move my queen back to the c2 square. Okay, let's exchange it. Queen goes to c2. And now I'm trying to bring my rook to the d1 square. e5. What my opponent is trying to do, of course, probably I will go here and then if I take, we exchange everything, opponent plays e4. Should I be afraid of it? Maybe, maybe I should have because my opponent will play e4 and opponent has got some kind of some kind of like a path for the king but okay exchange exchange opponent goes e4 i play let's say a3 opponent opponent has got king at g8 i believe so king goes to g7 i play b4 king to f6 king to this place king to f5 here king to this place yes because opponent will try to enter through that path of f5 and g4 somehow so what are my options? If I start with the e4, I'm afraid that opponent will play queen to d4. My rook is under attack. Rook d1. But I can play rook d1 later. I think it's not a problem. Okay, let's play e4. Yeah, because I have to... Always when you go into the pawn endgame, you have to make sure... Uh, what is the result and I was not 100% sure probably it would be a draw but uh, I was very afraid of that opponent's king will try to enter into my camp through, through f5 and g4 this is why I'm gonna play e4 and of course the next move that I'm planning to do is rook to d1 I also okay what my opponent can try to do my opponent paradoxically can move queen away somewhere and uh, or queen to queen to e6 maybe does queen to e6 work if i play here opponent checks me no but then i have got f3 and queen is under attack and rook is under attack ah, okay opponent played f6 i even did not realize so and opponent has to take it if opponent doesn't take it i keep possibility to go rook to d5 okay king takes i bring my king here okay i will i will offer a draw because position is pretty equal i'm pretty sure about it my time is much lower but i think i can play f3 and i can just wait with my king Yes, I think f3, king e3. Okay, my opponent agrees for a draw. So I was able to survive blindfold chess uh, against 20 to 85. Um, okay. Okay, and now you see me. Uh, just now I'm going, of course, to analyze uh, this game to see and also to show you what was good, what was wrong in this, in the, in this game. And just one remark before we start, it was con called blindfold because I couldn't see the board, not because you couldn't see me. But okay, after that joke, let's just take a look here.
So I started with the d4. I told you that this is some kind of uh, Queen's, uh, Queen's Indian, g3. And now more popular move is bishop b7 or bishop to a6. Uh, okay, opponent played bishop b4. So it's half half uh, Bogo Indian, half Queen's Indian. Not sure what is what is that. But okay, of course I play here, capture. And now I can take it back with the knight. I also, I'm also aware that in the Bogo Indian, in case opponent captures easily at the d2, it is a good idea to take it back with a queen, and later that knight can be developed to the c3. It's slightly more active, but I, I decided to pick a safer option because uh, I couldn't see the board. Okay, castle, castle, pawn goes to c5. Let me check the opening explorer, and that position was played 39 times. So. You know, it's a pretty popular. The most popular move is rook c1. I decided to go with queen to c2. It was played uh, six times. Pawn captures, knight captures, exchanges here. King captures, and now opponent went knight to c6. Uh, more popular move right now is queen to c8. Probably the idea is, you know, to give a check or to develop knight to c6 so queen can take it back. This is a more popular move. So, yeah. And now I decided, I told you that I maybe I can move my knight here, but I was a little bit afraid that opponent will take it, takes, and opponent will go d5. Maybe afraid is not a good word, but after this move, knight takes, takes here. You can see that if I capture, queen captures, knight is under attack, king is under attack, I have to move my knight back. I did not see any advantage for white in this position. This is the reason why knight captures, uh, knight captures c6, pawn captures, and now we have to fight for the open file, so rook d1. Okay, I have to admit that so far I'm happy from this position, and now knight to e4. Now, you know, if I have got experience of playing this game, I would also consider uh, two moves. One move that I would consider, I considered that move later, but I think it was not that powerful, was c5 just to open the c-file so I can bring my rook here. And after b5, I have got a beautiful spot for my pieces at the d6. Knight there would be would be fantastic. Or another idea is e4. But I, I didn't want to go e4 because opponent could go, I think, e5. And I was afraid that opponent will control the weak square at the, at the d4. Uh, but okay, so I decided to go knight to e4. Uh, yeah, maybe knight to f3 would have been better. I considered also knight to f3, I think, during the game. And after this move, takes, but it leads into basically the same thing, exchanges. But, okay, so I play knight to e4. We exchanged, rook goes there, b3. Okay, so b3 is the move that improves the position. h4, h5. Okay, so we were just waiting. King to g1. Uh, king to g1 is that passive move. But I just really wanted to move my king out of the diagonal in case something happens in the future. But if you remember, I regretted this move right after I played it. Maybe I should have played queen to c2. Because now opponent would go probably here. Uh, now I can take it even. Takes. Uh, I play rook d1. Position of course is completely equal. Same material, very symmetrical pawn structure. But I want. I didn't want to have my king at the at the g2. But okay. King to uh, king to g1. Opponent played rook d7, and this is the only moment that I was. I did not feel very confident for a second, because I saw that now opponent will probably take control over the d file. In case I capture, opponent will double pieces. In case I play queen to c2, rook is coming to d8. So this is the only moment that was I was really not sure. But maybe I don't need to be afraid of this uh, anymore. So I decided to move my king closer. King goes to e1. Of course, I'm just controlling uh, the d1 square, so I do not lose the rook. Opponent plays c5, e3. And now I'm just waiting. Again, I'm just improving the position. Okay, black has got... I have to admit that black has got an initiative because black has got two rooks on the defile, I don't have it. But um, but yeah, but I think king to e2, queen to c2 should be possible to hold. King goes to e2, queen d7, captures, captures. 
queen to c2 and now of course opponent plays e5 and in this position if you remember i calculated i think it took me over a minute i calculated this move and i was very afraid about that opponent will capture and opponent will go e4 and i think if i remember correctly three or four times i repeated that i'm afraid of that path for the king because now black king has got access to my position and i cannot do anything active you see i try to calculate that idea but i'm too slow in maneuvering my king here that king is much much faster in moving here so probably i have to bring my king and keep it here but then i have to be careful when it comes to tempos so uh, so so in case opponent goes there i have to put my king into the g2 and I have to also pay attention to pawns. It's this is the reason why I didn't want to play it. It was very easy to make a mistake, so I played I played this move, and the purpose was to bring my rook in the next move. And now opponent played f6, and I think that this is the move uh, that opponent that was not the greatest move for the opponent, because after this move we just went into the rook d1. I will just go back into this position and this is a completely draw. Uh, opponent had got six minutes time advantage, but opponent even didn't try. I just play even play here. I play king king to e3. Of course, I have to pay attention what's going on on the board, but uh, but I don't think that this is uh, that opponent has got any chance. But maybe this is the moment when opponent could create more problems. Uh, so queen to e6. I think I mentioned also that after rook I wanted to go here and after this move I told you that there is f3 but maybe that there is f3 and queen is hanging rook is hanging but opponent had got a really nice move rook to d4 opponent could place the rook into the outpost and in case I capture which probably I have to do because I cannot tolerate such a powerful rook opponent captures with the pawn and opponent opponent's position is slightly better this is probably not a big advantage but uh, no doubt that opponent is slightly better because of that pass pawn. And now I have to be very careful. Do not forget that I had got only two minutes and I was playing blindfolded, so uh, position was definitely worse. But anyway, I think it was quite an interesting game, and uh, I'm just very curious how long did you did you follow the game when you were watching this? Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoy it. You can leave the comment how many moves were you able to follow me during my blindfold game. Uh, if you like it, please click thumb up. Uh, please also subscribe my channel if you want to see more similar uh, videos. And do not forget to get a free workbook on stopmakingblunders.madbobula.com. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.